Uh, hello again, it's Ryan, the GM still, of Session 5, Part 2. So if you've missed Part 1, go back, please. Um, uh, it is the 30th of October, 2018, for those who care. Uh, Starfinder, the Fragments of Eternity, and the players. Hi, it's still Olka. I play Emmeline, who is a Lashanta pilot. Hi, I'm Nico. I'm playing Zora, the Vesk. Captain, I could not think there until the last words. <laughs> we just said Vesk this time. Yeah. Totally Velk. <laughs> Velk. <laughs> Hi, I'm Alex. I continue to play Nix 5, the Android Mechanic. Hi, I'm Colin. I play Lyco, who is your kind of undead uh, bounty hunter, also kind of of sorts. <laughs> Honestly, I didn't mangle it as badly as I did the first one because I was consciously trying to mangle it, and you know, it, it, it was a thing, it didn't work out, we'll fix it in post. Miss Goosey. It's fine. <laughs> and I am still Callum, and I will be playing Zig. And Callum is yeah. precious. Lovable space rat. I will see. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, good. Uh, right, we're in part two, guys. So. I believe I left you with the wonderful visuals of a purple crystal chrysalis. You did? Yes. So Zora, make an athletics check. Yes, As the camera nice flicks back to you going <laughs> and wrenching open doors. I like the visual of that actually. Imagine the checks aren't even for the doors. The doors are nothing to him now. He's got that down. The checks are like. <laughs> well, he's, got, he's not got them down. Oh he's no, not he's not. That's on that <laughs> what, were, what were the checks for there, Colin? What were you saying? No, like, the, my idea was that he, the, the checks were for the running, not the doors. Like, well, they, he's like, He's got the doors nailed, but he's just like, he's struggling to find his rhythm, you know, out of breath. Uh, do you want to mark uh, another? Like, so you've got a success, a fail, and a fail? Yeah, two fails and a yep. success. Um, so just mark that as we are so far. Oh, Your running I'll total, no pun it. intended. I'll actually just do this. None received. Well. Just to yeah. clarify. Okay, that's fine. Um, mostly it's the overall efficiency of Zora is what I'm marking down. And pretty much everything Zora would need to do is athletics to get back to that ship. So, mm -hmm. you know, where once you may have like crawled through vents and like circumnavigated heavy not locked doors, Zora's smashing through reinforced glass windows and stuff. So yeah. <laughs> I'm just creating the path, you know. Yeah. Paving uh, the way. So uh yeah. Meanwhile, back in the lab, yeah. What 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 do? And yet in the the harsh blue lighting. Blue lighting green text. Um <laughs> <laughs> what do? Um <laughs> You heard. Not chap on the containment. <laughs> no, um, yeah, definitely don't do that. Well, there's this, as I said, the purple crystal chrysalis is in the the centre uh, of this, what looks like, isolation room where there's a big kind of like plexiglass uh, like screen like encasing it. So it's observable, you know. You've all seen like Independence Day, right? And other sci-fi films mm -hmm. do exist. But you know, they, they had that lab with a nice window. You know, it's about a million miles away from that type. That, yes. Yeah. Oh, the, Not to foreshadow anything, <laughs> but yeah. Oh yeah, there's like this room is full of like scientific equipment. Uh, can I check? <laughs> are any of the terminals on and functioning? I don't know. Maybe you need to go near a near a terminal and investigate. Okay. Um, I'll go have a look. Yeah. Um, and see if we can get some information as to what the hell it is. Sure. Yeah. Uh, would you like to go to one of the computers? It will ping on and like. Mm -hmm. Glow, etc. Um, if this is like from the viewpoint of the camera, it, we see it from Nix's perspective, like over his shoulder, like the screen flickers on, um, and it brings up the uh, like like interface for him to start working. But from like your guys' perspective, looking at him, uh, it's like where the holographic screen would be. You actually can't see it; they're all privacy sided, um, so you actually can't look at what someone else would be working on, like the other computer screens that you have had elsewhere, where it just projects the hologram. So yeah, this is fancy shit. Yeah. It's at least item level 2 or above, you know. 
<laughs> Expensive, you say? Oh yeah. So yeah. There's that. Uh, do you want to give me a computer's check? And then tell me roughly what you're aiming for here. I'm looking to get some information as to what is in this, uh, in the chamber. Yeah. Um, you start flicking through the files. Um, it's mostly the computer is running a lot of the instrumentation that is like mm -hmm. aimed at that lab kind of unit, if you will, um, the isolation unit, and there is like data and, and like code that's still to be like translated. Uh, however, it starts, you've got like the microsecond counter of like how long the tests have been running. There's a part where the code like stops like less than a second, but there's like screeds of data that these instruments picked up within that time frame. Uh, and they just stop, like the line of code just stops midway. And uh, then there's like no more data. And that was after like less than a second of starting these tests. Th these instruments started uh, running like months ago. Uh, does it match up with the time that Alice said the what Alice last had record of the crew? Uh, no. Okay. Like this is old. Like I said, it's a few months old. old. Whereas you guys were maybe like a week or two ago. Mm -hmm. If like, it's hard to say, right? But you were about a week or two ago. This is months ago. And um, this data was like it started recording at least. But the first split second has like screeds of data, like you know. And then nothing. Yeah, we're talking like you know, like even ten percent of the hard drive space of the station was filled in that like first split second, and then nothing for months. Um, and is there anything obvious from the nature of what it is? It would need to be like translated. It would need to be processed, felt like actually like. It's just been taken mm. in the raw data for like, it was programmed to take in everything, which means it needs to be run through an algorithm to make it make mm. sense to normal people. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way I'll phrase that. <laughs> Are there any warning signs around to suggest major danger? Uh, strange blue lighting, uh, weird mm. purple cocoon chrysalis <coughs> crystal thing in an insulation unit. Alice in a battle tank suit and uh, <laughs> weird runes floating in front of every single instrument pointed at that. No, you're fine. Okay, cool. <laughs> um, the runes are floating in front of the instruments. Yes, every single so, instrument you can spot has what looks like a magical rune floating in front of it. So are these like hybrid instruments? Uh, I don't know, how would you work that out? Um, I think for hybrid it could be kind of have a look at how it's functioning and deduce whether it is purely mechanical. Is or that not. an engineering check? Yeah, I think that's. Uh, the I thing. think they say you can use either engineering or mysticism for hybrids. Um, engineering. Yeah. Yeah. Viewing instruments. Using thine eyes. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So uh, great. you look at them. Uh, there's. They look mostly tech. These mm -hmm. these instrumentation like the nothing about the equipment in this lab looked mystical. Okay. Except the fact that there's runes in front of all of the instruments. Other people are welcome to do things also in the room of uh, harsh blue lighting and purple yeah. cocoons. Yeah. I would continue sort of heading up towards the other end of the room where the others are. And for those of you listening oh, to every single way I say something, cocoons was a uh, not intentionally pl plural. <laughs> Just in case people freaked out and went, but my god, there's 14 of them? He never said that. <laughs> there is one. So what are you doing, Lyco? Heading towards the opposite end uh, for the further things. Yeah, like the other side, the other side of the lab, me. yeah. Like the, the releases, yeah. Yes, thank you. Oh god, sorry. No, that's no, fine. Like um the releases would be like 
so think of it like you've got a box inside a bigger okay. box, right? User in the middle box, like the one inside, mm -hmm. and you just went through the door that connects to the other sections of other boxes you might be linked up to. But the outside box is probably where all the releases are. So you need oh. to get out of the shell of this lab into the outer shell, release everything, hope you don't float away. That's what you have understood thus far. <laughs> okay. Uh, I suppose we would rather than I would I would be looking around the room for the way through to the outer part. Mm. Yeah, like I mean, you look at the far side uh, of the room, uh, and around obviously there are other like kind of you know like I described last session when we had the you walk through your locked doors and there's like doors left and right, mm. almost kind of like access like engineering access doors. Um, those exist in this lab as well. They're a bit more heavy duty in this one, and you can see scorch marks everywhere oh, in joy. this lab as well. Um, like maybe now when you're looking around and you spot them, you can now see like as the, maybe the camera angle tilts slightly and the light hits things in a different way, and you can see scorch marks in more places. Yeah. Um, okay. Emily, what are you up to? Um, is Nix just on his computer? Well, he's basically, like, from your oh. point of view, you're seeing him, like, face, like, his body's facing towards you over a desk, but he's staring at a screen that doesn't exist, according to you. Only he can see the screen. Right. Uh, but if you walked well, around, you'd, that... you'd have seen that he's staring at a screen, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I'll walk around and I'll, I'll, I'll just to confirm, like, what is he looking at? Mm. Uh, and then I would probably head towards where I thought we should be going. So where the releases are as well. Sure. Uh, I assume, like, I know from, from what Alice has said that where, where to go. Yeah, plus, like, if you look like you're going to these directions, she'll be, like, pointing at the doors. Uh, and giving mm -hmm. like thumbs up to each of you, like almost assigning you to a door each type thing. Um, yeah. But I need Emmeline and Lyco to give me will saves. Of course. Mm. Okay. Um, Do you want us to type anything? Just save. Yeah. Find out what they're for. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, I am rolling uh, so bad tonight. Fine. Well done. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Not that bad. Yeah. So we've got some big numbers here. Oh yeah, so it's been an interesting session, actually, number wise. Um that's that three critical it's done. It's quite it's really yeah. the extremes. Yeah, it's keeping us on the edge of our seats really, isn't it? This how well is this gonna go? So the blue light no like the, Nothing flickers of any kind, but you can see um, the lab you went through, the dark lab. Um, the lights flicker on briefly and off again, as if like power was momentarily restored and then flickered off. You and Emmeline and Lyco both feel this kind of like shake them, like from the inside out. And you feel the pulses coming as if waves are coming off of that cocoon. Okay. That shakes you. Like maybe initially you think, "Oh, the place is shaking," and then you realise it's like, th like coming from you. Someone's breathing super heavy on their mic as well. It's you, Nico. Please don't. And then the, as I said, like you feel it's actually, "Oh no, I have been shaken." Like it wasn't this. This room hasn't moved. It was you that actually vibrated, if you will. It's probably like really uncomfortable now. Like that kind of, "Oh, someone's," you know, like spine chill, etc. Um. You probably have that really uncomfortable feeling. Also, like you now, like the kind of the anxiety-ridden. You're no longer comfortable in this exact moment. Mild panic attack vibe. That's you mentioned it explicitly as coming from the. Do we feel it coming from that, or do we just feel it? Yeah. Like, do we so know like exactly where it's coming from? You yeah. initially think the station is shaking again. Yeah. Because that was exactly what you would immediately go to, and then realize it's you use like nothing else is moving. And, no. and then you you can do that slow turn as you both look towards the same direction, and you could feel like pressure coming off of that cocoon. Okay, that's that's more of what I was looking for. Yeah, yeah, because I, I I wanted to know specifically like, do we just know that these are psychic waves, or do we know that this thing is projecting them? 
so we know that. Um, mm -hmm. uh, that being the case, I would look uh, with a worried expression towards Evelyn. I would return that look and um. <laughs> maybe just say we need to hurry up. Mm. I mean, yeah, probably. Um, you, anyone that's looking, okay, so I'll give this to anyone that actually would be paying attention. You can decide amongst yourselves who that would be, not you, Zora, sorry. Um, the runes, as this happens, all glow brighter very briefly as that wave hits, and then they kind of like die back down to just a kind of a gentle rune glow. Um, everybody knows what that is, of course. And then <laughs> He's actually um, like the place starts to like brighten up. Like there's pulses of purple light coming from the walls as the plasmoids are pulling through the walls. Yup. Okay. So there's about three of them pulling through right now. They're coming from the edges of the room, um, not necessarily in any particular like direction. They're just coming from outside, going in, essentially. Um, Alice, when was, do you know when this thing was brought on board? I just kind of like stare look at you and then she like turns and looks at that and goes, I have no idea what that is. Do you know what happened at this particular time? And I'd reference the uh, moment the data was pulled from. Good. Well, that's when this section of the lab was installed, give or take, and she shrugs. And they made one measurement, and then everything shut down. And she kind of goes, ooh. And it kind of like turns slowly while she goes, ooh. And then looks right <laughs> over at the big kind of cocoon thing. Right. And this is the source of the shuddering. And she kind of just like starts to nod as she's staring at the purple thing. And you can kind of, maybe like the audience, just see the reflection of the cocoon glowing on the faceplate. And I was like, kind of like her kind of slightly like different shade of pinkish purple as her face kind of hologram. Is there kind of clearly staring at it? Can I try pulling off one of the oh instruments my. that's yeah oh no. that's <laughs> pointing towards the thing with the runes on it? Uh, so what is that? Was that like in the chamber so, with it? No, no. Like so, the instrumentation's like mounted like on walls, mm. on ceilings, on tripods, etc. Like there's just a whole bunch of stuff everywhere. Some of it's coming out of the walls. Some of it's built into the ceiling, like overhead projectory stuff. You've got. Um, as I said, tripods set up, um, things mounted on desks. There's just mm. as much instrumentation pointed at this thing as possible, but every single piece of equipment has a rune floating in front of it. Yeah, so I'd look for one of the small bits of equipment and see if I can just pull it away. You know, something that's on a tripod, maybe. Yeah, like um, as soon as you, see what like, I mean, it's the like the equivalent of a video camera on a tripod. Mm. You can like, what do you want to do to it? like tip it over? Like what? Turn it around to point in the other direction. Yeah, like as soon as you do that, the rune disappears. Okay. Um. And if I turn it back. Yeah, the rune appears again. But the rune is not coming from the equipment. I mean, is it? I have. <laughs> Shrug. <laughs> do you think the rune's coming from the equipment? No, I think that the. Then, as far as you know, yeah, the rune is not coming from the equipment. <laughs> I think while he's doing all this, I will just sh shout over at him um, in brain voice okay. uh, that we save. need to hurry up. We need to <laughs> nope, get doesn't doesn't even get uh, that far. Oh, okay, right. Like, so we'll see. As you stretch out to get to him, it's yeah. immediately pulled a different direction. Like you can feel your mind not connect to him. It uh, just goes straight to the isolation tank. Do I feel anything from the isolation? We'll I'll find out after yeah. the save. <laughs> yeah. We'll see how robust your mind is. Oh ho! Oh ho ho! It's better than before. Yeah. So, if you can imagine, back when you lifted that door up and it was very hefty, imagine if Alice had just walked off and left you to carry the weight. You'd maybe have got like crushed a bit. That's mm -hmm. the weight your mind's under right now. You've pushed out to get to. Like maybe it was a reflex as well. Like you, like you see him playing with runes and stuff and equipment, and you like almost like reach for him psychically as if don't do that, you know, don't touch things. But your mind immediately gets pulled straight away into the cocoon, 
Um, you're back in that black room. As I said, you feel pressure pushing against you. You're just standing in a black space, but you're, everything is pushed against you as if you're underwater and the pressure is crushing. But you're still there, like, you know, you're you're doing your best to, like, mentally block as much of this out as possible. You're using what you've learned from, like, connecting to plasmoids and mind jank mm-hmm. before. Um, and you're, like, you're holding against. You're obviously, like, hurting because it's pushing against, like, your wounds that are there. Um, yeah. And, your, like, your arm and stuff. And you just, again, when you open, like, your eyes from the strain, you're staring at this purple crystal just, like, a couple of metres in front of you. And it's just you suspended in blackness with this light source of purple light from the crystal surface and you just see your reflection in this kind of like smooth kind of like facet of the cocoon. What do you do? I'm, I'm almost tempted to reach out and touch it but I don't know if I'm be maybe under too much pain and discomfort to, to do anything. Yeah, like, I mean, like, you're definitely under a lot of discomfort. Like, you're doing what you can to not be crushed mentally. Um, So, yeah, yeah, like, moving, like, limbs, not saying it's impossible, but it wouldn't be easy or comfortable. You definitely know that much. Can I try to pull away from it in any way? Of course you can, yeah. Um, How are you going to try that? Are you going to, like, blot out your telepathy? Are you going to... Like, talk me through it. How does how does Emily pull back from these things? Like, um, I think she would try to focus on somebody else in the room. Okay. Try to focus back on on either like or next. Mm-hmm. Uh, pick one. She can. Uh, next, because she was trying to reach. <laughs> or actually, like, because she was trying to reach next, and that didn't work. And mm-hmm. uh, suppose like was closer. Okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah. We'll leave you there. Okay. <laughs> Lyco. Make a will save? No, no. This is about no. your will save. Ah, oh no. <laughs> so, I, like, you've had that shudder, you've seen Emmeline, like, turn round and, like, gesture towards Nyx, and then, like, fall to the ground. Um, so she's, like, fallen to the ground, um, and, like, she's kind of not moving, she's kind of, like, almost as if she's gone completely, like, rigid stiff like comedy paralysis would be um she's kind of lying on the ground not moving uh, maybe like her eyes are flickering and her uh, like antenna are going a bit crazy in the, the helmet i uh, like like oh, like hyper rem maybe and uh like does that attract the attention of lyco or nix that seems like something that would be hard to ignore yes mm. what about like uh, sorry nix are you still playing with the runes on the cameras at the moment yeah, I'm okay. developing ideas. I'm focusing on that. No pun intended, of course. Uh, <laughs> twice. Um, right, Lyco. What are you doing? Uh, I so you've had the uncomfort, like the discomfort from yeah, the wave. Um, you've seen her fall. Yeah, okay. Um, you can definitely feel that pressure and presence of the cocoon as you move. Like, it's not... like. It waved out, and then it's as if it's now pr- like ever present. That kind of pressure in the room. Yeah. Um. Again, kind of like running in a windy day, or like um, but not as obvious as the the Vaseline, So hence the underwater movements. A bit more kind of thick atmosphere. Um. You make it over to Emelyn. Uh, as soon as you make contact, uh, what is it, Emily? Are you screaming into Lyco's head? <laughs> <laughs> um. I don't know, um, is, am, I, am I like trapped in this black Well, remember you room? said you were going to reach out to Lyco? Yes, or... Yeah. So what is it you uh, would be, what is it you'd instinctively be saying to try and get to Lyco? Because this is going to be like, you're going to have to like force a message out, if you yeah. will. Uh, I would probably say, help me. <laughs> okay, so yeah, you just get like hit with this kind of psychic wave from Emily as soon as you go and make contact with her to like help her. And it's just, help me. So it's maybe like quite staggering, um, as this kind of screams in your head. Uh, um, so he, he'd probably be sort of like leaning down as he as he touches her. So he would possibly like sort of stumble down onto like one knee. Um, and I think see from that like camera angle, um, we've maybe got it from like looking 
at Emeline, and you like crouched over as you stumble back onto like your one knee. Uh, we've got the image of a figure standing behind you that we get for oh. the audience, and then as the, kind of, okay. the camera does that cut to a slightly different angle, the figure's gone. Um, as you like stagger back and then carry on your description. <laughs> of course. Um, he, he'd sort of take a second because he doesn't know what the hell to do to help her. Mm. But I so said, the f- first choice would be to try and get her up off the floor um, in a fairly standard, you know, arm under her back, kind of just get her upright, set her down somewhere if need be, and, you know, resolve the problem of having one less person than we need to handle this situation later. Mm-hmm. Um, is there anything nearby I could sort of lean her against? Oh well, yeah, like, there's loads of like consoles and stuff, yeah. Um, so, like the place is like, a, like, it's a very large... Is there, is, there, is there a chair I could shove her onto? Yeah, of course. Yeah, in that case I'll, I'll pick her up off the floor, put her in the chair and... Uh... Would Lyco maybe like try to shake me awake, almost? That never works. <laughs> <laughs> no, of course not, but <laughs> try. <laughs> um I, honestly probably not. Like he he's, he's seeing like, like eyes flickering like so he he's probably not going to go for that option because if he's he's hauling you up he's probably gonna also assume that if shaking you would rouse you that would probably happen anyway just through the process of getting you off the floor mm-hmm. uh, so I don't think I don't see him actually doing the you know wake up shake <laughs> uh, that's so beloved of uh, various <laughs> forms of media yeah. Uh, yeah I think I think he would do that and come out to the present to the mm-hmm. Nix and, and Dallas uh, there's something Badly wrong here. Um, Alice just kind of looks at him and goes, "Yep." <laughs> Starts <laughs> nodding slowly. Helpful as always. Um, I think with that we cut back to Zora. Can we have a wee cheeky athletic <laughs> role, please, Zora? Certainly can. Certainly can. Make it a good one. No, make it a good one. <laughs> Oh, oh yes, there's on that twenty. There you go. Same Perfect. <laughs> nice. Mark an additional two successes. <laughs> that is like Moses level. <laughs> away. Like Zora just gets fed <laughs> up, going, oh, oh, puts both hands out like a kind of prayer, just parts the hands, and all the other doors rip open in front. Goes, <laughs> oh, thank God I can do that. Runs on. <laughs> but that doesn't right, actually happen, of course. It just is mostly Zora just getting. You know, like I need to do this for the team. Ah, oh, Vesk. And then yeah, uh, yeah, enough, enough shot on a bit. Mm-hmm. Um, so we got three successes to failures. Not bad, not bad. You have one more roll to do, by the way. And um, we'll deal with that in a moment. Cool. We're going to cut back to, uh, obviously, helpful Alice. And uh, yeah, in that room, let's go to Emlyn. You're in the dark. Uh, you got the pressure on you. You got this purple crystal thing is the only other thing you can really perceive in the room other than the pressure. Uh, you know you've pushed out and you know you've connected to Lyco, but you were like, it was as if like you reached out of water but then your hand was pulled back into water. You know, that kind of, you know you mm-hmm. managed to make contact and then it was like, I guess, engulfed again. Yeah. What do you do? Because this is basically what you do as he moves you into a chair. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, do I feel any nope. of that? Movement? You've got all. Nope. Mostly just the crushing pressure of crushing pressure. <laughs> <laughs> ah, my favourite crushing pressure yep. type. Um, I don't know. What are my options, really? You tell me. What would you try? What What, what, what does the what, what does everyone think <laughs> I could do? Yeah, like feel free to outsource it to the group. I mean, you're welcome to discuss yeah. this as players. I'll give you fourteen words between every day. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Because it's either really tr- keep trying to pull away from it or try to get closer to it. I suppose. I would recommend not getting closer to it. Uh, yeah, yeah. Not getting closer to it. That's maybe the best idea. Uh, yeah. Is there any way you can disengage your telepathy altogether? I can try. Mm-hmm. I suppose. 
let's it. let's try that. So are we will <laughs> save. Are we, are we checking? We will save to disengage. Them. We will save. Yeah. Look, spell save. That'd be helpful. <laughs> Cheeky save. There we go. There we go. <laughs> you saved all your rolls for the end of the game. I see every day. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, no, give it time. Oh yeah, I mean, I'm still expecting some class ones when you try to fly the ship away. But <laughs> <laughs> that's all this going out. It just stalls. It doesn't doesn't. Start. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I checked. <laughs> Um, <laughs> We've had that before. Yeah, it's, mm. <laughs> yeah. Some of us have. Yeah. Mm. So anyway, yeah. Um, yeah. Describe how you shut off your telepathy. What do you do? Like, is this something you're trained to do to like maybe stop being overwhelmed as a kid or? Um. Yeah, I suppose if it's just sort of like the so the tel telepathy works like almost talking. Mm -hmm. You open up this channel of communication, so it's like, or if you like, if you imagine a phone call, so I'm almost hanging up. Mm -hmm. Okay, just yeah. And then just focusing on not talking, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> no, like, yeah, like it's almost as if you've got this, um, you know, expanse of connectivity from your mind out the way. Um, and mm -hmm. maybe this is like the feeling of the pressure. Maybe now that you've tried to think, oh, actually, it's not crushing pressure. I just, my mind is actually being pulled open in a way. Um, as if something is trying to talk back that's using a bigger channel than you can hold. Um, mm. And that's when you realise as you try to like push closed the... Uh, I mean, I guess like trying to close a heavy, heavy door, right? You know, you're trying yeah. to push it back, but there's loads of water pouring in. You're like, oh God, why is this water so cold? And why is this description so difficult? And then you close <laughs> it over. And as you manage to like, push it closed, like you finally get that feeling of, you know, relief of what it's meant to, like, what you're meant to feel like, and you kind of, like, start awake. Maybe this is as, like, Lyco has put you in the chair, and he's kind of, like, maybe taking a step back from you, maybe. Um, you, like, you start awake really quickly. Maybe the chair falls over. Um, maybe it doesn't, who knows. Um, depends how dramatic your awakening is for you. But you manage to, like, seal off your mind uh, with quite a considerable amount of effort. Uh, like, it's quite exhausting, to be perfectly honest. Not quite to the mechanical level of exhausting or fatiguing, but we'll get there. Um, yeah, so how do you react as you, like, w awake? Uh, so I think I, w I wake quite suddenly as well. Mm. It wasn't a nice a nice experience. Um, it's like waking up from a nightmare, almost. Probably, yeah. Like, so a, like a narrow like, escape type vibe as well. Yeah, like, just panting. Mm -hmm. And I'll just look at Lyco and I'll just say, we need to hurry up. <laughs> this thing is dangerous. Mm -hmm. Michael. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd probably look quite intently and uh, just say I, I agreed. Um, yeah, and I said it in my normal voice. I'm yeah. not using telepathy <laughs> <laughs> ever again. No, I, I guess I say that. <laughs> they, you know, agreed and um, broadcast to all four. Of us, well, not me. That would be redundant. Um, <laughs> just the feedback. Yeah, just a screeching yeah. feedback. <laughs> uh, yeah, just um, oh, what, 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 what did he say? Hmm. Um, suppose we want to have Nix and Alice just tell us where to go, and go there. Well, that's just kind of pointed. Yeah. Like where you just need to go anyway, like it's basically all those hatches that the corners of the room. Yeah, but Nix to. isn't doing it. So. No, I know. But, but that's up to Nix. <laughs> <laughs> Nix is currently um, just playing with equipment at the moment, trying to work out what these <laughs> rooms are. I'm going to go for the classic. Uh, okay, no time to explain. The cocoon thing is dangerous. Move. And then I would just uh, go for the door as quickly as I could. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, you can just run at the door. Like, yeah. You can do that. Nix, um, while they've been doing that though, obviously there's been some kind of a uh, noise in the background. Um, mm. But what have you been doing? Like, so you've, from your perspective, you've moved the like instrumentation away, rune disappeared. You moved it back, the rune appeared again in front of the instrumentation. What did you do next? Because you kind of ignored the, the others, um, and you never heard, obviously, her connection telepathically. Um, so, mm -hmm. while that happened, 
what did what were you doing? What was your next step to try and you know um, solve the puzzle? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I'd have flipped the instrumentation back so the room disappears, and then I'd also be looking for any reaction from the chrysalis to that. Uh, no, like there's no. Th- it's still kind of this weird purple hue around it, you know, like it's yeah, and like a really orbs. vibrant amethyst, you know. Are the orbs still floating towards it as well. Yeah, they've like pulled into the room by this point, um, mm-hmm. and they're just beelining straight for it. Because at this stage, I've got the concern that it looks like it's going to consume those things. Mm-hmm. Um, the people will be killed, and we have no idea what's going to happen if it does consume them. I mean, give, consume given them what Lyco seen, that obviously you might not necessarily be paying attention to. Um, doesn't look like this is the first uh, set of plasmoids that have made it in this room thus far. Yeah. Um, I'm wondering if it's getting more powerful as it's mm. consuming more. In which case, I don't know that ejecting is necessarily the best thing. <laughs> because it's just meant to continue to consume things. Assuming you're correct. Yeah, assuming I'm correct. <laughs> but I'm now trying to figure out if there's a way to kill it. Okay. Um, I would hope that if they got it in an isolation chamber, there would be some sort of purge system. Sure. I mean, um, that would be sensible, right? Yeah, that would be sensible. So I think I would be looking for those sorts of controls or yeah, I mean, maybe go back to Alice like to help in those. I mean, I think we all know Alice's reply, don't we? Yeah, she's not particularly useful. Well, I mean, you can ask her, obviously, but, in character as well. But yeah, you can go, like, you can ask her, you can go to a console and try and... I'd act. probably go to the console while asking her. So, so what do you say to her? Um, it should be, Alice, do you know any way to uh, purge this, purge the chamber? Isn't that what we were here for? And she kind of like absently like turns back to you as if, obviously, duh. Like, <laughs> I don't mean ejecting it. I mean a way to kill the thing that's in it. And you hear her go like, shh, as if like putting her hands up, as if covering the ears of the isolation chamber, but not obviously being big enough to reach them. And be like, but that's it. She just stops as if she has implied all that. <laughs> okay. I will just go to the console and <laughs> start work on that. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, you go, are you going back to the same one you were at before, or are you going to look for, like, uh, another one? I'll probably try a different one. Sure, like, um, I mean, again, like, uh, another lab kind of portal it's, opens it's up. Similar stuff. You know. It's mm-hmm. a weird phrase, isn't it? Another lab portal opens up. I mean, let's just say the console screen opens up. There we go. Yeah. Lab portals, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, opens up. Um... And then I'll start looking through, see if there's any obvious commands for emergency shutdown, etc. Hey, nothing like that, but you can see files that say Project Aurora. Well, I'll open those. Mm. Yeah. Indeed. Um, so, yeah. Uh, give me a computer's check, please. Try not to give me a 1, I'd like a 20. I would like a 22. It's been 22? Well, phew. Well, there's a 15. Yeah. So, you get uh, into some of the files. This computer hasn't, it's been locked. It's almost as if the security to get to the lab should have been enough for people. And then uh, you bring out the files, and it just, maybe you scroll back to the beginning and go, hmm, first entry. And then uh, it is a, it's identified as a stellar object of unknown origin. That has been found in the diaspora, and it was found near the location of this station. Uh, this station was built to study this object. Uh, their initial readings calculate its age to be unknown. It is old, very, very old. Um, to give you like points of reference, there is a like almost like a sample like dating. Let's just say carbon dating because I can't think of a cooler sci-fi term. Um, quantum dating. There we go. Quantum dating's good. <coughs> sci-fi. Um, so there's quantum dating signatures of a really like you know we're talking like thousand like multiple thousands of years old items have been quantum dated as points of reference for the calibration of these the, the, of the equipment that's trying to monitor the cocoon. 
Um, but that split second of data that you like managed to snapshot, they've managed to work out this thing is even older, just beyond their ability to process. Um, and beyond that, it was pretty dormant. It's pretty much what you get. And they've just labelled it Project Aurora. Mm-hmm. Mm. What's Hamelin and Lyco doing? Just heading straight for your designated points? Yep. Yep, that's the plan. <laughs> cool. Yep. You just head through the doors. Uh, let's say you're at the, f- the two far sides, okay? Um, I think you just headed up that way anyway first. So you've got like top left and you've got top right. Uh, and that's a uh, Olka has or Emily's got top left. You've got top right, Lyco. And uh, you just like start to head through like the the you know uh, the inner workings of the the framework of the lab. Um, I guess the outer workings maybe. And uh, you start heading for like the big manual release buttons. Um, while you're doing that, can we go back to Zora and get a have we a flashback check, please? Um. Now this doesn't happen in time with this because obviously you're going to be taking way longer to try and get back to the mm-hmm. ship yeah, than yeah. what they've taken thus far in this room. But yeah, the idea is that you've made it easier for them to get to you. You know, that's not so good. Hmm. No, that's, that's that's not the worst. You know, that is not the worst. Um, mark three successes. I don't, uh, mean, I don't mean an additional three, I just mean one more. Like, so total three. Okay. So, is it total uh, four? Four successes. Total, total four. four. Successes. Yeah, yeah I sorry, total that's right. I was counting the two, I don't know why. It's because it said S2. Um, yep, cool. And I'll, we'll come back and narratively explain all of that once we know what the other guys do and who has to make new characters. So, <laughs> meanwhile, back in the lab, uh, Nyx and Alice. So, Alice, like, walks up to the console. And kind of like taps on your shoulder. Yes, Alice. What are you doing? I'm trying to find out more about this thing. We need to know how to stop it. How's that working out for you? Not great. There's these guys aren't particularly clear on you know emergency procedures. Charlotte looks down at like the the screen and looks back up at you and looks at the screen again and looks off to the uh, the cocoon and she's like, I don't like it. Yeah, I don't like it either. That's why mm. we need to find a way to stop it. The uh, the three plasmoids that are in the room are now like burrowing through the glass, and like you see the the, the glass kind of like react, um, and it's like a whole line of uh, like interlocked hexagons appear instantly over all the glass as soon as these things touch it, and then you just see like the sparks come off as these kind of again energy jellyfish are pushing through what looks like a defence grid that's over the glass and that's just very visual in the room now so it just sounds like people are welding things um, and that's like the kind of the colour scheme we've got against this blue lighting uh, Alice, do you know what these runes mean? She kind of looks any of this. Um... Charlotte looks as if looking for an answer. Right? No. I'm not. I'm not. And she like kind of like looks for the word. And she's like, I'm quite young. And kind of like, like puts her lips together, like purses them a bit, and goes, kind of like starts to nod, as if that's explained what she had to. <laughs> Do you think they're important? And kind of looks at you, kind of like. Is this going somewhere? I'm wondering whether that's whether whatever this is is using that as a connection to the station systems. Like if it's in some way. She like tilts her head amplifying. As if like taking it and she like I don't think so. And then she like straightens her head up and she goes these instruments aren't connected to the station's mainframe. I would have 
and she like stops. I would have been able to see inside here. She kind of like gestures vaguely with a hand to like the lab. Like you've got like sparks of these jellyfish fighting to kind of get through in the background, and uh, she's like, "I am. Um, this is," and she like makes like a box shape with her hands, and then like makes a bigger box around it, and then kind of like as if holding the whole thing, kind of gestures as if to you. She's like, "Yeah, it's, you know, it's air gapped. Yeah." She points at you with a finger gun. <laughs> right. So. And it just waits. <laughs> Is there anything we can do to detonate the section? Other than just you know, once it's ejected? Um. Do you have it? And she looks down at the, the giant weapon that you carry. So points at it and then gestures with her hands and then like moves her hands apart as if we need a bigger one. <laughs> okay, so we eject this, get on the ship, blast it away. Kinda of, like just looks at you and goes Sure. Shrugs. You hear the servos of the armor as she shrugs. I'm out of ideas in the meantime. Okay, let's get on with ejecting this. Just kind of like pat you on the shoulder a little. And kind of like turns around to the cocoon. Uh, the like three jellyfish things have burrowed their way through. And you can see like again from the perspective of Alice and Nyx. Obviously Lyco and Emily can't see this. The jellyfish, like almost as if they just uh, like coat the cocoon with all these energy tendrils, like as if it's like a net all wrapped around it as they all overlap each other and the whole thing glows. The actual crystal structure seems to like soften as if it's not as faceted as like a rough cut stone. So it's almost as if their interactions are like melding and the runes glow brighter. Okay, so the runes do play a part in it. Um, Alice. Have, before they go in ahead, can I have uh, some cheeky will saves, please, uh, you two in the corridors? <laughs> that would be uh, Emmeline and uh, Lyco. Yep. First. Emmeline, you've got a plus two to this, just so you know. Okay. <laughs> so that's two. Another twenty. Mm, nice. Yay. Well. Oh. Sorry. Carry on. <laughs> um. Rule over. Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, so. That's a five. <laughs> A big wave hits. You can feel the place shudder again, but nothing's moving, nothing's rattling. This is for you two as you're climbing up ladders to get to these manual release kind of column things. And uh, Emily, you have this kind of like almost spidey sense about the whole thing, not to plagiarize, of course. Um, <laughs> like you get this kind of like prescient wave of no, and like it's almost like you duck under like the wave of it, and it pulses over you and washes over you as if like you're lying on the beach and a wave hits over you. Um, and you kind of like wrap up uh, on this like ladder as you clutch towards it. Um, and you can almost feel it's like a really creepy, as if somebody was like feeling like as if their hand brushed over like your shoulder and up your head. And it's like that kind of psychic, you know, someone's trying to make contact, but obviously you've been quite adamant about locking down your telepathy. Mm -hmm. Um so yeah, like this is really creepy like that. Almost like a, as if a ghost was touching you, you know, that creepiness. I mean, I say this like people know exactly what that is, like, you know, <laughs> but weirdly we all got there. And uh, yeah. then, Lyco, as you're climbing <laughs> to your manual release column, uh, you get to the top or you're about to like get off the ladder and in true horror 
movie mm. style. Uh, you look up and someone's staring down at you. It's like a f- like a darkened figure. But I was kind of anticipating that. Like, with the case, do they look a librarian by any chance? You can't really make it out though. That's the thing. Yeah. Um, you obviously get startled. The w- like it's as the wave hits. So like maybe like you grab a hold of like the ladders again because again you think the place is shaking. So instinctively you grab to secure your grip, and then you realize the place isn't shaking. It's the pulsing again of that cocoon. And you look up, and this figure is staring down at you. And then, for a split second, you see you staring at you. Just at the end oh. of it, as it like dies out visually, and then it's gone. So, Nix. Yes. The cocoon is more of a glowing energy orb now. <laughs> I'm. <laughs> Going to choke to death. Um, Try no. not to. Yeah. Um, I am going to focus on the runes. Cool. And start flipping equipment and tell Alice to do the same. Particularly because she can handle the big, tougher pieces of equipment. Cool. Like she picks up a chair and just like fires it at the, the first line of the equipment she can see to try and domino effect most of it. So she just That's picks up a chair and just throws it at and she's like, and goes to move and like rip other bits off the walls and stuff. So yeah, she starts trashing it. Obviously, as she moves equipment away from being pointed at this thing, the runes vanish as you're witnessing. Mm. Yeah. I shall continue to do the same. Yeah, like I mean, you can trash all that. This thing is still pulsing away in the like in its containment you know? The mm-hmm. uh, like since there's no more of these things trying to get through, the hex grid vanishes as well. It flickers out because I mean, it's no no longer considering itself under threat of course Mm -hmm. um but yeah like as you're uh, like tipping over these uh, like again maybe ripping things off walls and throwing stuff you know the the actual stuff mounted on the ceiling and stuff like that uh you're getting rid of these runes but then you see like you can hear like the sparking of a like electricity uh crawling up something conductive and you see like the hex grids being like appearing as these like pulsing arms of energy like creep up a bit like the tendrils from the uh, you know the kind of plasmoid things but like yep. arcs of them are coming off of this purpley orb in the middle it's starting to glow very bright it's now like a purple hue in the room more than the bluish light um, i've upset it <laughs> it's well it's it's definitely uh, an active <laughs> boy or you're making it worse <laughs> um so yeah what do you do? Is he in range of our comms unit? Yeah. Can we... Like, I think at this point, we're, I don't know if we're getting close to maybe the the um, releases, uh, but I, having just felt this wave mm. of uh, psychic bullshit, yep. I think I am going to be saying to him to get to his station and tell Alice, because I don't think... Is Alice on the comms? Or... I mean, uh, can, yeah, I think she's on comms. Yeah, you can open comms. Yeah. yeah, but, um, yeah, so I'm telling them both to get to their... Essentially, you'd releases. be calling Nyx yeah. to calm Alice, basically, because yes. you haven't officially yeah. invited her in, you've never ever said that, so I yeah. just assume you've broadcasted everything in the room with her. Yeah. Until this yeah, part, because yeah. you'd have to calm him and say, make sure Alice does what she has to do. Yeah. Yeah. And so what is it you say to him? Uh, I say go to your... Uh, your manual releases because this is getting worse mm-hmm. and we don't have much time yep like basically the top of the stairs that you were clutching onto as well is like the giant release column that you'd have to be pull uh, so you're right. like literally there same with you Lyco. you're you're literally there as well yep. um yeah so you you get this message Nix. what are you doing are you staring so do we have to pull it at the same time is that the yeah. idea I mean I just about or... Alice just said they all needed to be released, so. Right, okay. Never actually went into any detail. Other okay. than they'll have to be released, that's it. And not get stuck on it. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, so, yeah, you've, you're basically just like, maybe you've tipped over what you can and trashed what you can, and all the runes that you've been able to reach are gone. And you're kind of maybe just staring, because maybe the, the arcing, sparking noises have distracted you, Nick. So you're kind of just staring straight at this purple light. Maybe we get the, the shot of just looking at your face bathed in purple light, and it's just the glowing purple in your eyes. 
that we see as the reflection from, you know, the thing. So this, you're saying this is reacting against the hex grid? Yeah, so like as like a cr like the electricity like sparks across the floor of it and then up the like the glass plating, that's when the hex grid appears and as if it's under attack. Because I'm going to, because those were just random instruments, weren't they? That it's not like they were. Yeah, like, it was just scientific like game recording game. data. Yeah, like it's, yeah, they weren't projecting yeah. anything though. Yeah, in which case I'm gonna. How many more are there? I mean. I mean, Alice could probably have trashed the rest, it's not that important really, they're just pointing yeah. at the, the thing, yeah. There's... and now it's responding angrily. Well, I mean, it's responding... It's interpretation. Yeah, sure. I don't know. I mean, I um, can't... who knows, right? Well... <laughs> <laughs> Ryan knows. I um, do, but I'm, I'm being vague and mysterious and nebulous. <laughs> How... Um, for a GM to do so. Yeah. Um, I mean, from what you can tell, though, like based on like your ability to just process exactly what's just happened and not be distracted by purple glowy lights, um, <laughs> like your assumption could be that these runes are reacting to the fact that things are pointed at them. Mm -hmm. You know, seems to be it. Alice has trashed what she can. This thing just seems to be reacting to the fact that it seems to have absorbed three plasmoids. Okay. You know? So it could be that there's just lots of runes around. It's projecting a magical field. Mm. And these things are detecting it. Potentially, yeah. No? Oh, okay. Uh, then yes, I will go back to the... I mean, you could roll mysticism at any point on the runes, right? Or the field, or any anything, really. You can I go for that now, then. <laughs> if you would want to, it's up yeah. to you. But that's what I would do to runes or mystic bullshit, is roll mysticism. <laughs> <laughs> it seems, yeah. Bam. Yep. That's... Ooh. There are runes. That's not good. <laughs> um, You're not even sure of that. <laughs> Wait a sec. Like, <laughs> is your mysticism one? Is this a recall knowledge of some sort? I mean, is it? If yes, I will use my memory module to re-roll it. How does that work? Talk us through that very briefly. Uh, it's my exocortex it has a memory module to enhance your knowledge per day. As a reaction, while not in combat, you can reroll a failed skill check to yeah. recall knowledge. Sure, go for it. Yes. Just make sure you use your thing by pushing whatever Bhutan you need to. Uh, let's see if I actually put the memory module in. Let's see. I haven't actually got it. Oh. No, I've only got the skill focus part of it. I haven't put it in the first bit. Okay. That's fine. I'll update that later. No worries. Mysticism. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> right, so just okay. just for my own desire, can you roll that once more? <laughs> just let me just do this. Go for it. Okay. That's fine. That's <laughs> fine. So, what I like though is, this: the scene is, you go to look at these things, and then maybe you see runes right in front of each eye like they just appear so the audience would see them appear as you try to study them then you like shake your head a little and then obviously the internal of this is you accessing your uh, cortex and everything and trying to like pull up the memory like database and compare the data you're trying to take in and then as you do that again the runes appear in front of your eyes almost like you're trying to study this as well and yet these runes seem to be reacting to you now Okay. So yeah, runes. But, uh, Zora. <laughs> yes, yes. So overall, you've been pretty <laughs> successful, quite frankly. Um, your journey is pretty excellent. You've basically just steamrolled your way through the, like, I said it takes several hours of, uh, you know, you try to get up there, but like that was you being really cautious on the way down to circumvent things. You've just blasted your way through as much of it as possible, shoulder barging, you know, doing whatever ridiculous Solarian moves you've got to get through there, shooting locks before you get to them to smash into things. Maybe doing that thing where you take a couple of shots at the glass and smash through, etc. Um, yeah. And like you just, we've got this shot of you, like it's maybe like a kind of dark, pristine hangar. You've got like the silhouette of the ship there, 
with the light coming from the uh, like the ramp that's open, and uh, we just hear the wrenching of the metal door getting ripped open, and then you're just like in there panting in the doorway, um, knackered, and we'll click off back off. to uh, the lab in the center of the kind of the purple nonsense and mess. Like so, next you shake off the the runes and you stop trying to look at this stuff because it's, it seems to be blocking you, like it was blocking the instrumentation. And uh, you look over, uh, <coughs> the orb of like purple light seems to be forming in the way, like as, as, as if it's pulling in. Lots of plasma start pulling through the walls, like you guys are actually having to, do, like Lyco and Emlyn and obviously Alice etc, you are like actually having to duck away and like side dodge these things as they're coming through the walls, like as if they're being ripped through the walls, whereas before they seem to be burrowing their way in. Now they're being pulled. You can feel like a special Lyco and uh, Emlyn. You feel the pull uh, because this is the same thing that was pulling at you. Uh, and we have this kind of wide shot of the lab as all of these things like fill the room, filtering past it. You can feel the heat of these as they pass by you, Lyco. Uh, sorry, not Lyco. Um, next five. Sorry. Like you're kind of like engulfed in this purple light. And we'll hit maybe like zoom out of the lab a little to like the outer ring, um, and you just see like this wave of these things heading straight in to this lab. It does that thing where it speeds up the camera ever so slightly so they all get in, and then we zoom right back in, and the room goes dark, and then there's a light source from where the cocoon used to be, and in true Terminator 2 time travel style. Burnt all around the room. There is, the runes are marked into all the burn marks, as if there's been an explosion pulsing out. Like everything in the lab is trashed. You've got a uh, Nix Five and Alice kind of standing bemused in where they were, and it's almost like red burnt scoring of runes all over the place. I uh, as if that's the aftermath of the explosion, and in the center of it all. This figure stands and just stares around the room, looking directly at a uh, next five, and then the eyes narrow, and we end it there. <laughs> so you knew that was going to be there. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah, we did run a bit yeah. over. Thank you guys for sticking with me for that. I appreciate the extra time. Um, I just wanted to get to this point, as you can probably guess. Yes. Uh, yeah. Just want to maybe do our. Naming first. Mm-hmm. What's the thoughts? I quite liked uh, an offhand comment that Nico made, which was uh, enough sauntering about. <laughs> <laughs> that is some greedy Nico, I would say that. <laughs> it's extremely me. It's definitely me. I'm certain that's certainly something I said. Uh, does it, do you feel it summarizes what you've experienced? I guess that's it. You know. Oh, you could argue, because this is sort of a getting to the point well, session, I, isn't it? I could definitely argue. <laughs> Can and I'm sure will. <laughs> um, I like the term within as a title, um, because it kind of covers Alice, use and that, but it also covers Emmeline and her psychic. Like, so I think within works really well, but that's my vote. You guys can do what you want. He says GM. <laughs> any, any get any suggestions for what they would mm. call it? Try think. Try think for one. Well, we'll summarize. You started with Alice. Just put in her armor. She then ripped out a computer. You then headed through the lab. Olka was, or Emily, sorry, was attacked by a plasmoid reacting. Uh, you headed through the dark. You separated the party. Zora just completely Iron Man her way through everything. Um, I mean that in the fitness contest more than the Marvel character. Um, mm. You had uh, obviously you guys investigate and trashing a lab. You had some psychic attack bullshit and drowning essentially. Um, you had some spooky people appearing visually in Foot Lyco. Mm-hmm. Uh, you had runes. You had uh, well, Alice being weird, I guess. Uh, lackluster artillery lasers. 
Uh, and then yep. a thing appearing from a big purple cocoon. That face in the darkness. The better thing, yeah. I like the name Pressure. Pressure is good, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because there's pressure on the on us psychically. There's pressure, time pressure. Mm -hmm. to hurry the fuck up. I think pressure. Yeah, that sounds pretty good. Can we go for under pressure? I was thinking of how to tie it to, to a clean song. I mean, <laughs> it's up to you guys. You can have pressure or under pressure. What do you prefer? Can we have under in brackets and then pressure? No. Yes. No, that's not. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes. We are introducing oh. ugly brackets into my YouTube channel naming thing. What about handsome ones? <laughs> um, no. So, uh, <laughs> pressure or under pressure? What do you want? I like pressure. I like pressure. It's nice and... Pressure works. Succinct, yeah. yeah. I like both. <laughs> I'm fine with both. I like as well. Good, good. Like we'll have that called pressure. Oh, oh, oh. Um, you need to be mercenary and go for your own suggestions. <laughs> <laughs> um, the last thing I want you to do, if you stop by and spend a bit more time, uh, what did you enjoy? Like, do you want to go down? The, in fact, we'll, just, we'll start from the bottom this time because we always go from top to bottom. So, Zig. <laughs> what did you enjoy? Um, Hashtag smash that like button. Calma's precious. Hashtag Hello, Nick. Like um, <laughs> unsubscribe so you can resubscribe. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Make another account. Yep. <laughs> yeah, like what was your highlight moment? I know you weren't really here for most of it. Um, uh, oh, man. So I look, look, quite a bit happened, actually. Hmm? Um, I really liked um, uh, Emlyn's just like help me moment. It was just—it was just so like just simple and sweet and kind of like ah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good. What were so, you? Yeah, I, I really like that bit. Mister uh, Quint. Well, <laughs> um, the heart. Well, the uh, the figure. I liked the figure a great deal. That was awesome. Mm. Uh, obviously, it didn't do much, but. I w obviously, also, it was slightly telegraphed, so I was expecting it, but it's still a cool visual. Yeah. Um, it's still a nice little horror movie moment, which I very much enjoy. Uh, partly, because it is <laughs> not Halloween, it's yeah. Halloween -een. Um yep. <laughs> And I'm just generally a sucker for spooky stuff. Yeah. Hence picking the undead guy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so I, I, I like that. I like the. Similarly, actually, the uh, fact that you. Emphasize the creepiness, how uncomfortable it would be for a sort of unwanted psychic intrusion when Emlyn was explicitly shutting out mm. like psychic uh, contact. Yep. So I think I think there was a sense which I uh, I did really like uh, that almost like the two not the players obviously but the characters were experiencing like each their own very different. Mm. Session, and I don't just mean because Zora was off annihilating mm. doors. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, in terms of like the ones who are in the room, obviously, Alice is gonna have a different experience than all of us to begin with because she is not quite mm. the same yeah. as what we are because she is mechanical, she's not. I mean, she, her line was, you know, I am mostly circuit boards, yeah, um... she's, she's not like an android, for instance, which is. Basically the same as a human, uh, but session, made from... Sorry to jump in there, but the session title could have been called A Jar. <laughs> it works it on could, almost yeah. so many levels. Um, so many, but anyway, it's fine, we'll carry on. And sort of like, the, but it was it was that, obviously again, mm. GM played the character, but even so, you know the characters having a different experience than other characters in the room. You know uh, Nick's obviously quite focused on mm. his sort of selected task of these runes of trying to get information on the thing in the tank specifically uh so for him it's not like it's not mystical before the thing starts mm. to really get intense it is but that's not the same sort of experience of the mysticism for him like maybe he's approaching it thinking oh this is a combination of you know say runic magic with ordinary security mm something like that, he's not coming in going you know, there's, there's a spooky man trying to get in my head so you've two very different sessions happening, like between the people who are in 
the center room and the people mm. who are going out to reach the and i thought that was cool i like the idea of just like you take two steps out of safety and suddenly you're a horror movie yeah i also like for me just to kind of throw in there to, for what you said you're rolling twice the same mysticism check <laughs> was so good because yeah. it gave me the opportunity to have the runes affect you <laughs> thus kind of answering your question by telling you how you didn't get the answer just saying, I really enjoyed that part. But no, that was good. The dice. Let's go. <laughs> no, I like it when, the, but I mean, end of this RP'd with me before. Knows dice just kind of work the way I kind of lead them to thematically to make it cooler. <laughs> um, what about you, um, Nix Five? Um, I was actually thinking I'd really enjoyed Mister Five. Yeah. Is that it? Like Mister Five? Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Nick. Mr. Five? Mr. Five is for Johnny and only Johnny. Yeah. Okay. Right. Sorry. He is alive. Sorry, Nick's. But you're not Mr. Five. <laughs> I, I, I guess Nix is sort of the surname and Five is the yeah. first name. Yeah. Oh. Um, but sorry. On Android as naming late. Yeah. yeah. As you were saying, um, sorry. <laughs> I say it was actually Emlyn's response to uh, kind of her telepathy getting hijacked. Because mm. um, obviously my first reaction would have been from Nick's, you know, centering himself and everything. Mm. But I quite like the fact that hers was to stay in telepathy mode and just try to refocus it. Mm-hmm. That um, was good. Rather than any sort of, yeah, kind of more, I, guess, I want to say disciplined approach where she's got a more <laughs> gung-ho, people-focused <laughs> thing going on. Yeah, I think um, she's just, that's just her her thing. She's always used telepathy and that's always solve, almost solved her problems. Yeah, and so she was very instinctual about it. Wasn't it summed up with yeah. Top Gun in session one? Like, I think <laughs> that, that when we were describing like character personality, it's like yeah. very Top Gun. Yeah. 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 <laughs> she's good. And she I like that. It. Awesome. Yeah. So it was not necessarily looking for the, uh, the best game solution, but for the the best character solution right it's like yeah. what would your character actually do because i'm very obviously I, I want you guys to be it's like oh, yes. well this might not make sense mechanically or be efficient game wise this is what i would do and i'm sorry guys <laughs> <laughs> um what about you well, i think oh, oh, carry on. on you go before I move no, it, was, it was just well it was just a minor thought like i actually think that's something that i was quite i'll pat myself in the back a tiny bit over is like uh, the whole librarian thing not bringing that up because I was just thinking there about is 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 uh, Lyco gonna say anything about mm. the figure? Um, not bring up the library because he's just not the type to do that without some sort of surrounding context. Mm-hmm. And I thought my instinct would be as because we all have that kind of meta gamey voice he- voice in our head. I think uh, maybe it's just the table topper in me, but. That's not a word. Well, I'd say, uh, but like, it, see on what you're saying. Yeah, like, saying, use this information, put it into action. But, would he? Well, it's a detective I... thing, right? See, in character, there's a perfect explanation is you are a detective ish. You know, you're working the, for the stewards, yeah. etc. You've got, like, a logical problem solving in mindset, similar to Nick's that way, but yours is more of a let's collect the facts and make a plan afterwards. So, you could be like, I don't know what this is yet. I need to work out what this is. I wouldn't yes. instantly go, guys, I see spooky things. Because you are a spooky thing. So. There's also an element of keeping your like cards close to your mm-hmm. chest. You don't know if this is a psychic phenomenon, how it's affecting other people. Mm-hmm. Uh, you don't necessarily want to give everything away. Is it actually just Emlyn winding you up? You know, like who knows? Um, <laughs> playing the long game. Um, yeah. What were we gonna say, Nico? Or should I say, <laughs> Mr. Dora? <laughs> um, I enjoyed the just inter- the various interactions we. Uh, Alice, obviously. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, 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 I like your smile exchange was really good. But, <laughs> <laughs> but, we, but a, a very difficult personality. It was handled very well this session. I, I liked it. You mean you didn't tear the <laughs> robot in two? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nobody tore the robot in two, which is more impressive. Cause mm-hmm. She's definitely um, a more likeable, frustrating character. <laughs> Yeah. In the Some. past characters I've done, yeah. <laughs> Give me time. Um, I also like the uh, psychic interactions with Emily and such. Yeah, yeah that's the no, it's covered quite a bit. Mm. So, yeah. What about you, Emily? Miss Dally. Uh, I, <laughs> <laughs> I think as always, I really like your descriptions of what Alice looks like when she does things, when she, the way she mm. says things, the way she stands. Uh, I think it's really cinematic. Like it's really easy to imagine what she looks like. It's like, oh, of course she's doing that. <laughs> uh, 
and I really like that. Uh, I also liked how Dora went. Sorry, Zora, Dora. <laughs> the explorer. <Sorry. laughs> went exploring, quite uh, frankly, yeah. <laughs> how, yeah. how Zora went exploring, Enduring. yeah. How he went and um, almost trusted his team to get on with with their task mm-hmm. while he went off by himself and did what was right for the team because yeah, he good. is the captain. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he went and Hulk smashed the door. And it wasn't just like a gamey decision of no, let's keep the group together for the like for the reason that we're all in the room and we can all use our skills for, to solve the problem. It was a mm-hmm. no, this we need somebody to go like secure the ship because that's the like it does make sense to split your resources, yeah. right? Um, yeah, so the escape route. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. That so yeah, so it was good of of the decision was made that actually he's the best man for the job. It's quite good as well, just from a, like, I appreciate it because it means, narratively, you guys technically make the right call, in my opinion. I think that was quite a good call to make. And it is good because it is kind of Nico excusing himself for a bit of the game. So it's good to know that you're, like, you're willing to commit to, like, no, Zora would do this, this is exactly what would happen. Um, and it lets me obviously get you, give you, like, some certain skill checks to see overall how well can you do this over a period of time. Which is what those checks were for multiple times. It was a. It's not just going to be one athletics check and then that's it. We just described that you screwed it up yeah, because yeah. you tripped over the first hurdle. It's going to be a. No, you'll see how you go in stages because this will take you like you know maybe forty five minutes. You could have covered that, you know. Um, it worked out pretty well as well. It was like almost like uh, I started off really fast and then <clears> I started to get. I was like, oh, I'm going too fast. Oh, and then mm-hmm. oh, I'm like, but tough not princess. I need to go. Yeah. And it's like, like <laughs> 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 that was awesome. Um. I thought it was a good a good session. I uh, got a good ending there as well. Love my love my cliffhanger endings. Uh, yeah, we will not be closing off chapter one just yet. Uh, there's <laughs> one more to go, but I should be able to do a halfway next session, which means we should be able to get Zig in the last half of it. So the first half will probably be closing off that scene, and then hopefully you guys getting out of the space station before you all die in space, and then hopefully going and picking up Zig. Yay. That should be awesome. Yay. Um, nice. Anyone get anything else to add? Do we add anything else at the end other than hello, Nick? Um, well, that's about it, really. Hi, Nick. Hi, Nick. Hi, Nick. Um, <laughs> Do it again, just to make sure. It's <laughs> uh, about it, really, isn't it? So, uh, thanks for listening, whoever listened. Cheers. Like buttons are there. Use them. I don't know. Link your Twitter to it so you save yourself double posting it. It'd be good. Um, and yeah, goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Bye.